What are your stories of petty revenge? I used to work at Best Buy and Geek Squad and usually the people working the closing shifts had to clean up their departments and such. We had just gotten a new manager who was an outside hire from Circuit City. He was trying to be a hardest and flex his management powers by being a meticulous C about cleaning during closing duties asking crap like did you clean under the registers and Windex and Dusty TC about every little freaking thing. A buddy of mine I was working with and I started our closing duties a little early since the store was pretty dead that night in order to be able to leave at a reasonable hour. We pretty much wrapped up 15 minutes after the store closed so we got the manager to do a walkthrough so we could leave. He's looking around and everything seems to be in order until he looks behind some signage on a shelf and runs his finger through picking up some dust. He has this crap eating grin on his face and lets out a little weasley laugh and says looks like you guys still have some work to do. My buddy and I looked at each other and we both just knew what had to be done. We cleaned the entire department top to bottom, inside and out. Every drawer was emptied, dusted, wiped down, brochures organized. Every computer in the back was moved and the shelves were dusted and wiped. Floors were vacuumed twice. Top stock was neatly arranged. Every inch of the department was gone over with a fine tooth comb. Twice in some spots just to take longer. 10pm turned into midnight. Everyone else was long gone except for us three. He was looking weary and tired. Midnight turned into 2am and we were still going at it when he finally came out of the office red eyed and exhausted and said guys, let's go, but we still haven't dusted under the counters and, it's fine, let's go. Buddy and I took our sweet time gathering our things and clocking out. We both were also off the next day and C manager had to be in early for a conference call so it made it all that much better. Every time he was the closing manager after that night he never gave us trouble again, simply asking us if we were ready to go when the store closed. Justice prevails. That was an incredibly satisfying read. I love how you beat him at his own game. Moral high ground. Gained. Whenever I was at work I would keep an eye on some of the coins I had in my till drawer that weren't legal tender in my country. I would then give these to customers who were buttholes to me in their change. Muahaha. Working in a corner store in Australia I always have Kiwi currency in there. I always make a note to only give them to New Zealanders. There certainly isn't a shortage of either one in Brisbane. I had a drunk guy wake me up and try to fight me one night in a hostel. I was cleaning up in the morning and he was asleep on the couch. I took his flip flops and put them in the lost property. So petty, I know. Perfect, you are a crusader. Did something similar to some buttholes in college who like to play 12am hall soccer and break the hallway fluorescence. When I was 10, we had to paint birds for art. I was pretty good at art but a girl copied my exact one, even though we had to do different ones and I was not pleased. So while we were cleaning up paint brushes, the painted birds were placed nearby. I put her painting in the sink with the tap running, pretended it accidentally fell in there and walked away like nothing happened. I think she got the message. That's some gangster crap. When I was in high school I went on vacation with family and bought my then girlfriend earrings to surprise her with when I got back. I came back to her introducing me to her new boyfriend and me subsequently being kicked to the curb. Two years later we got to talking over Facebook and I initiated a booty call. Afterwards, she told me she had feelings for me again and I responded with cool, I'm late for dinner. Talk to you later best mashed potatoes ever were had. One kid in 8th grade was being mean to me, so a couple days later I convinced him that my violin rosin was rock candy, he ate it. I once convinced a friend that a piece of my bass resin was caramel, same ending. I have high school kids that park on my street every school day, occasionally they will sit out there and smoke cigarettes, which is fine, they are largely respectful of my property, I noticed this one kid always threw his mcdonald's trash in my yard I have caught him doing it a few times, now I egg his car every time I see trash on the ground, so far, I have done it twice, but haven't seen his car for a few days, maybe he gave up parking on my street, yes. I am 32 and egg a 16 year old kid's car. My brother for some reason hates using his laptop in his room even though he has a desk. He comes downstairs to sit in the lounge next to my room and games until really late at night with his friends. Always talking really loud yelling into his headset while I'm trying to work study sleep. 
he utterly refuses to go to his room when I ask, claiming that he has every right to be there because I don't own downstairs. He is in a competitive gaming clan, often competing in tribes, ascend competitions with cash prizes. I have written a script that turns the internet off for 5 minutes every 10 minutes. Just enough time for him to get into a game and then have his connection drop and then repeat 10 minutes later. All night. At my previous job I worked with a story topper. You know. She did it way better. Cooler. And sooner than everyone else. She even started using my stories. I was very irritated. I started taking a pen or two a week from her desk. Sometimes it was some little doodad. I would casually snatch an item then take it to the men's bathroom where I would put it into a hole near the sink pipes. It sounds stupid, but it made me feel like a bad butt. I wish I could be there when they have to repair that sink and find all of her supplies in that wall. One time my brother ate my last popsicle, and I was really pee off about it so I waited until he was in the shower and took all of the towels out of the bathroom and hid them. He was all wet and there was nothing he could do about it. My ahahahaha. I work in retail because I need the health insurance, but a lot of customers seem to believe I work where I do because I'm an idiot, and the second something like that comes out of their mouths, could you actually learn how to do your job correctly? Some of us have places to be, you know, jobs that actually matter, I become the stupidest cashier you will ever have. My idiocy knows no bounds. Even the mentally handicapped creatures at a Walmart could do better than me. But what's that? You're the shithead that brought in an expired coupon. And when I scan it and tell you it's not valid, I'm the stupid one. Ha. Huh. Okay then. I guess I need to call over a manager to okay every single one of your coupons. You snotty T. Good thing you weren't in a rush. Oh wait. You're gonna be late to your doctor's appointment? That's too bad. Because I accidentally just deleted everything I rung up. Go to start over. Note, I only do this to customers that insult me first. It's never unprovoked stupidity. And I don't do it if there's a line behind them. It wouldn't be right to frick with innocent shoppers. There's a bar at the end of my street. And my mom liked to go there to watch people play pool. She didn't drink. She would just sit there and watch and drink Diet Coke. Apparently. She struck up a conversation with one of the guys one day, and he kissed her on the cheek and then played a great game of pool. So after that, he'd kiss her on the cheek before he played pool. For some reason, the guy who ran the bar accused my mom of being a prostitute and banned her from the bar. Mind you, my mom was a sweet, 300 pounds 50 year old lady who worked as an engineer and dressed like she was going to work. There was nothing about her that would make you think prostitute. I got revenge there several times. My go-to was making big pizza orders and then never going to pick them up. One time, my friends and I went to that bar, and my friend whipped his dong out and pee all over their bar and floor. On a Friday night with the place nearly packed. My favorite though was this one Saturday night. On Saturdays, they had biker night, the place was packed, and they always had the jukebox blaring. I put a $10 bill in the jukebox and played in sinks. I won it that way 40 times in a row. When I was in college, I was on a road trip and I saw the Canadian bar chain with the same name and logo. I looked it up when I got home. And sure enough that bar chain had been in business for longer than the bar had been using that name and logo in the US. So I emailed the chain with pictures of the bar and all the info for the bar. They emailed me back to thank me and forwarded it to the legal department. Six months later, the bar had a new owner and a new name. When I was working part time at a grocery store they cheesed me off. Six months after I stopped work there I was thinking about my treatment during my time at the store and decided to report them for multiple health code and building violations. Bear in mind that these were not made up allegations, but I am sure that they were shut down for a while because of it. I don't consider this petty, if they were real violations. They were putting people at risk and needed to be reported. I think you did the right thing, regardless of the fact that it was motivated out of revenge. It was my first day back in my third grade class after being out sick for nearly a week with the stomach flu. I started feeling sick during story time after lunch and raised my hand to ask to go to the bathroom. Teacher told me to put my hand down and shushed me when I tried to protest. Cue this happening 3 more times or so and after the last one I just proceeded to vomit all over the classroom floor, which was carpeted. My daughter did this to her teacher, 
I had previously warned her that my kid is her usual cheery self, even when sick, but knew who Mrs. Teacher is a professional with years of experience and cannot be fooled. But she later admitted she thought child was faking it until she vomited all over the classroom. I found out my wife was cheating on me, so I kicked her out and sent her packing back to Missouri. She emailed me asking for her wedding dress so she could marry the guy she cheated with. I hung the dress in a tree, burned it, and sent it to her the unholy remains in a ziplock bag. The postage due. One time at a boy scout meeting, I was probably 10 at the time. My sister was there cause my mom was real involved. We were all playing a game and some kid implied that my sister was inferior cause she was a girl. Later on that kid was playing for spall and from the other side of the table I rammed one of the rods for operating the little guys into his stomach as hard as I could. No one picks on my sister but me. This guy I considered somewhat of a friend started dating my ex a week after we broke up. Jokes on him because I still haven't accepted his friend request on Facebook. Leaving them in friend limbo for eternity. I always smile knowing my public posts reach their news feed, but they can't comment or like it, and that's when they realize it. In kindergarten, it was my turn to pick out the book for story time. However, the teacher forgot, and picked the kid next to me instead. I think his name was Dave. So, I screamed a lot and hit Dave in the head with a toy truck, then called the teacher and butthole. Teacher, Dave, you get to pick the story. Dave, okay, you, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't let you do that bludgeons Dave with a toy truck. If a customer is mean to me, I slam their coffees down. I also walk slower when doing things for them, and give them the smallest cookies. I work in a movie theater, and anytime some butthole parent is being a dong, I ask loudly if they would like to add any candy to their order, knowing their kids are going to beg them for it. When my daughter was about 5 months old, I made an excursion to hub to get necessities. I was tired and had babiclarity with me. I patiently waited for one of those parent with child parking spots and acknowledged the mom loading up with a tired smile and wave. As she pulled her minivan out of her spot this old lady in a jaguar whips around me and into the spot. I was beyond infuriated. I just sat there shocked. So I pulled into another spot and waited. Waited for my daughter to fill up her diaper. I left that be a dirty diaper under her windshield wiper. Those last lines would make a great rap. My former employer is a well-known pizza joint that treats its employees terribly. I left and took another job and for a couple years afterwards I will still make large online orders for pickup that I never intend to get. I love people like you. I work at a pizza place and we get to take home all those pizzas that no one picked up. Wiener Poop 2012 this bee was speeding through the parking lot at my apartment and nearly hit some dude walking his dog a little ways up from me. Being the classy gal that I am. When BS car zoomed by me, I reared back like a cobra, hawked up the biggest, greenest wad of phlegm and hawked it right onto her windshield. I had gotten into my car to go run errands when B comes flying back around the corner, slams her car in park, and starts advancing screaming. Did you spit on my car instead of looking incredulous or confused and dissolving the situation? I blew her a kiss. I drove off with her wailing and chasing me down the street trying to punch my window in. One of my finer moments. Freaking brilliant. When I was in preschool, this kid Luke told the teacher I was scribbling while we were drawing. I put Legos in his shoes. This is a fate worse than death. You have assaulted someone with the pain of a thousand thousand drug free root canals. I work on a bar, and any customer who is in bar to me, I fill their glass with ice so they get less drink, or give them a small piece of lemon. Inside I feel like I've given them a massive frick you. Conversely anyone who is nice gets doubles for the price of singles and the largest lemon slices. I used to work at Subway. We would always have this regular customer come in and complain about every little thing such as not enough tomatoes on my sandwich, etc. I knew she was a regular and I knew who she was, but every time she would come she would only bring in her checkbook, not her purse. I, being the model employee, would purposely make her go back out to her car for her driver's license, which she would dig for for 10 minutes, and come up with two phone numbers while her sandwich got cold. Ah, this happened just yesterday. I was driving on a side street, 
speed limit of 40 miles per hour but there are a lot of school zones, so it is frequently 25 mph, and there was a crazy driver coming up behind me, weaving through traffic, speeding, ignoring school zones, and just being a terrible driver, all in all, I am driving next to a truck, and I look over at him, he nods his head, and I do the same, and we when this douchebag comes up behind us, we go the same speed, the speed limit, until we hit the highway, about 5 miles, the douche behind us was raging in the mirror and weaving back and forth, looking back, I feel kinda bad, but we have had a lot of accidents lately, where people are ignoring the school zones and kids have been hit crossing the street, so I don't feel that bad. Ah, my favorite driving game, box in the butthole, when you make that non-verbal connection with other drivers and wordlessly agree to block that jerk from cutting anyone else off, it's a beautiful thing. I hated my old roommate with a passion, she used to think her 10 week old puppy was peeing on her pile of clean clothes, it wasn't the puppy. I feel like right now is the time to share the reasons why you hated her with a passion, because at this point you're the insane roommate, not her. Last night, I went to my boyfriend's for Halloween, he's in student accommodation, and one of the girls on his floor has developed quite the desire for him. She doesn't seem to consider my existence in all this, and quite simply, I wanted to show her that why yes, he does have a girlfriend, so, even though everyone else was also free, I asked her to take a cute couple wife photo of us in our costumes, to sorta, drive home the point that he's mine, not as bad as some in this thread, but still quite petty. You could pee all over him or in a circle around him, kinda mark your territory. My brother's girlfriend had annoyed me by criticizing some of my life choices and then demanding I apologize to her. So I went to the bathroom while she was over and used all but the last two squares of toilet paper when I knew she would be using the toilet soon. Very petty, and quite possibly the most passive aggressive thing I've ever done. Had a co-worker who would eat people's food, even leftovers, out of the work fridge. We put cat crap in a burrito and he didn't realize something was weird till about 3 bites in. Oh I cringed, blue. I rubber banded a co-worker's desk drawer so it would slam shut when he opened it. I intended to pee him off. I did not intend on breaking his finger. Score for me? Score for you. My husband got back at his brother for something when he was a kid by sitting on his brother's face while he was asleep, like with his brother's nose up his butt crack and farted. Obviously the brother woke up and chased him around the house. The hilarious part was that he had crap on his nose. Do you want pink eye? When I was in high school, there was this guy who had a girl from 3 grades below that had a massive obsessive crush on him. She would even go with her mom and stalk him at his workplace. Everyone in my grade knew about that girl and her obsession. So one day I overheard that he had changed his number since she would not stop calling and texting him. So one day he called me something really mean, I can't remember what anymore, so in the next period I asked one of his closest friends to lend me her phone cause I had forgotten mine at home and I needed to call my mom. I went to the bathroom, looked for the guy's new number on the cell phone lent to me and texted another friend of mine, this is the guy's new number, let crazy girl have it, I kid you not, when I returned from the bathroom, I sat in my desk and his phone rang, he picked it up. Then he realized it was her, threw his phone in the ground and started cursing and blaming his group of friends. Never had a clue I was the one who did it. I guess it was pretty petty, but I had fun that day. I was eating at a Mexican restaurant with my young cousin who was autistic. She has a hard time going in public, but I was trying to be nice and take her to eat and go see Dolphin Tail. She loves dolphins, like seriously. There was a table next to us that was on their second or third pitcher for margaritas, and they were being very loud and crude. It was making my little cousin very noticeably uncomfortable, so I walked over to the table and very politely tried to explain the situation. Before I could even finish, one of them dumped his water all over my feet and went back to talking like I had never been there. I got all pee, but didn't fight back. Before I walked back to my table, I noticed that there wasn't a sober driver in the group. I left my cousin with my sister, stepped outside, and called my friend in town who was a cop. I explained the situation to him, told him what they were wearing, and got his help. 
they left the same time we did, and all piled up in a white SUV with the water dumping douchebag as the driver, perfect. As soon as the car moved in reverse, my friend flew around the corner, put his lights on, and asked the driver to step out. DUI and license suspension for the driver, drunk in public for the rest. Maybe not so petty, but super satisfying. Not only revenge, but you actually did a public service. If they are being buttholes like that, they are probably too drunk to be on the road. You may have even saved their lives. Just happened to me tonight. I was at the laundromat and an older lady was in there washing these sheets. There are three triple load washers in the whole place and this lady did not seem to mind putting each individual sheet in each triple load dryer for an entire 60 minutes. Totally oblivious that there were people in there with at least two weeks worth of laundry that could have utilized these space station sized dryers. So to get her back I waited for the perfect moment when I knew she was looking over in my direction and bent over to pull my clothes out of the washer. When I did full butt moon about 5 feet away from where she was standing. I know she saw cause she rushed out of the place and I just pulled up my jeans like it was not big deal and continue doing laundry. Pretty weak compared to some of these I know but goddamn it was satisfying to put that inconsiderate old bee in her place. TL. DR. Woman was being inconsiderate at the laundromat so I flashed my big fat hairy butt at her indiscriminately and received no recognition for the act of chivalry. So I was at Costco today, waiting in a huge line at the exit for when they check your carts for stolen goods. And this douche and his girlfriend just passed everybody in line behind me, including me, and tried to cut in front of me. He probably passed at least 15 people, as the line started moving. He tried to ram his cart in front of me, without looking, I just started walking forward, pushing his cart out of the way, until my cart was practically touching the person in front of me, he didn't say anything, and continued to cut the person behind me, but after a long day, I was not about to be cut, the satisfaction was amazing. When I was in 9th grade, a girl who was a year above and who had once been my friend began to harass me. She'd say mean things about me whenever I was in earshot, write crap about me on her public blog and send me horrible emails. At one point, her and her gay sidekick tried to jump me. I remembered that she had a big crush on Al Gore and I knew that she used Zanga religiously so I tried to log into her Zanga, using Al Gore as the password. Lo and behold, it worked. I deleted every single entry she had written. She had her account for like 2 years and when she saw what had happened, she made a long post about how heartbroken she was. Woman came into the frozen yogurt shop where I was working. She let her bratty kid run around. Mildly annoying. More annoying was that she let her kid disrespect and walk all over his grandma who was with them. She was also really rude and talked down to all my staff. When she went to the bathroom the kid jumped up on the counter and stuck his hand in the toppings. So I gave him an entire cup full of M&Ms. When she came back from the bathroom her little sucker was in a frenzy with the candy. Boy was she pee. But the little monster went into a complete rage when she took the candy from him. It got so bad and shameful that she had to literally drag him out. A guy I was friends with called me a N. I'm black and refused to apologize when I made it pretty clear that I wasn't okay with it. I bet he got quite a surprise when he went home and saw that he wasn't in my top friends on MySpace anymore. Some butthole at a bar told me that he hated smooth adult contemporary rock. So, I went to the jukebox and just played free falling and last dance with Mary Jane for an hour. I literally got petty revenge. My sister and I were about 13 when we went out for pizza and this group of older teenagers were making fun of us. We didn't want to start a fight, so we spent all our change playing happy birthday on the jukebox 17 times and then left. I got fricked over by a chick I was dating about 12 years ago, a year after she fricked me over. I decided that I was going to return the favor. I convinced her that I wasn't angry about what she did to me. She cheated on me and lied about it. I caught her thanks to her mom and began to charm her. She had just gotten out of a pretty bad relationship, according to her. So I did my best to charm the pants off of her. It worked and she began to fall pretty hard for me. Right when I knew she was falling hard for me, I just completely vanished and left her pretty devastated. I'm not proud of what I did, but it was really freaking petty and that's why we're here. I had a falling out with a housemate and decided to move out. 
he informed me that he would not take a check for the balance of money I owed him. Final month's rent, my share of the utilities, etc. So I paid him the $300 or so in cash. A big pile of $1 bills. All crumpled and dumped on his counter during the lunch rush at the deli he owned. Made him count it out and write me a receipt. Take that your smarmy bastard. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.